Welcome to Unbox Live. I'm Sisters in Smoke, your guest host. And today we have someone really, really special. Today we are talking to Indiana Artez, newly general manager of Mambacho Cigars. Hey, Indiana. Hey, Ben. How are you? I'm fantastic. How's it going in Nicaragua? Oof, everything is going very well. First of all, thank you for this opportunity. Thanks, Boveda, and thanks, Ben, for, for this huge opportunity and all the work that you have been doing for the women in the industry and for all the cigars, smokers, and passionate about cigars. Oh, thank you so much. So for those that do not know or may not be familiar with Indiana, she used to work at Agro Tobaccos. You might be familiar with some of her collaborations with Ventura Cigars, with the Psycho 7 Nicaragua or the Father's Friend in Fire. But today we are here to talk about the Lampert 1675. <laughs> We're excited. Um, as, as what I know is, is that it is going to be a new uh, United States release for TPE. It was released in Europe, correctly? Yeah, it's already released in Europe. And okay. today it's a it's a full excited day. First, because the uh, unbox with Boveda, and second, because we are shipping our cigars to to US today. Yes, today. <laughs> yeah, it's a good sign. <laughs> That's awesome. Listen, I want to jump right in. I'm pretty sure tons of people want to know about your new role at Mambacho and being general manager. And if I'm not correct please correct me, you are considered the first Nicaraguan woman to be a female general manager, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So this is a, this is a completely new journey and my personal experience. And it seems like we got, right now we got the power to make a decision, but I'm committed to make that decision uh, after I really meet the people and really meet the tobaccos that Mombacho uh, have been working during mm -hmm. the last 15 days. So I have this blessed to be working as a general manager, or you can say director of production of okay. the full operation of Mombacho. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a second home. Granada is the most beautiful place in Nicaragua and I feel so blessed to have this opportunity to live here, to move from Esteli to Granada and discover and meet the passion of this of the Granada's people. Because uh, like the twenty the twenty the, like the eight percent of the workers right now are are from Granada. So right now we have a small school to teach the Granada people how to roll and how to bond cigars. And I think that I have uh, almost a month working with Mombacho and feels like they are so easy to go. Mm -hmm. And this is the first opportunity that I have to work, to work directly with people and sharing my thoughts and learning from them, but actually managing my team in the way that I dream. So it is a it is a big big opportunity. I have so I still working with Agro Tobaccos, but in my in my free time, and Agro Tobaccos have been on the market for for more than twenty five years. So when I decided to jump uh, to join Agro Tobaccos, they already have established everything. And right now, Mombacho is given to me the opportunity to work with tobacco, but more in the industry. In agro tobaccos, I work in the blending area, just the blending area and quality control. But right now, I have to check every department of Mombacho, so it's going to it's gonna be fun. It's nice. having fun. Oh, so much fun. So you take care of the blends. Walk me through what a day as a general manager would be like. Well, you know, right now, actually, um, I'm working. So one of my roles is uh, supervise the cigars because mm -hmm. if I if I really want to improve any area, I have first to understand what's going on there and what are the struggles. 
So right now we are not touching the blends. This is not my, this is, this is part of the general manager, but my commitment with Mombacho is just like all the cigars that we are ready to ship has to, uh, has to get the well, well aging tobacco, has to get the perfect construction and the perfect combustion. So we are going to keep the original blend, but if, if, if we are developing that. Actually, yesterday I have a, a, a working class like analyzing their tobaccos and how we can get the, the best version, but only stay with the original uh, blend. Yeah, but it's not, it's not only brands, it's, it's more than that. It's trying to understand the people who are in the kitchen because we got lunch all together in the factory, the people who is uh, in charge of the packaging. And one of the brilliant things from Bacho is in, uh, in the different areas, it, just in one area we have, uh, in two areas we have uh, a man as a manager and the other rest are uh, women's. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a uh, it's big point and and we are so excited to keep rocking it small batch. That's awesome. I'm really happy for you. Looking forward to seeing what you do there. So let's talk about Lampard 1675. So we're gonna cut and light this. I am smoking the Toro. And I believe that Indiana's gonna light up her. You got the Robusto? Yeah, I got the Robusto 5x50. And okay. from Lampard, well, with Lampard, we have three different sizes. Mm -hmm. The short Robusto, three, three quarter by 52. Mm -hmm. The Robusto 5x50, and the Toro is 6x52. Okay. And then yeah. talk to me about the blend. I know that uh, they are selling this, talking about the Peruvian twist. Now, I have never smoked a cigar, at least I don't think I have, with the Peruvian twist. I know there are a couple of cigars that have Peruvian tobacco um, as primarily as a filler, right? So tell, yeah. me about, tell me about the Peruvian tobacco. Well, with the Peruvian, with the Peruvian tobacco, I decided to... To me, this tobacco like more than a year ago, and I remember that I'm start uh, uh, getting this flavor, this acidic flavor, who is particular on on the ligero leaves from Peruvian tobacco, and I really, I really found excited the different flavor because the Peruvian tobacco was the first uh, tobacco that I taste that it don't taste like tobacco in my short uh, knowledge of. of of tobaccos. Mm -hmm. So when I when I really meet this acidic flavors, I discovered that I want to create something with that Peruvian tobacco. But the problem with the Peruvian tobacco is the acidic, it's really present and it's really intense. So my first challenge was trying to sound a wrapper to really match with that acidic flavors. But it took me a year, more than a year to found the real, the real ingredients and the real components that match and give the better expression for that Peruvian tobacco. With this Lampard cigars, we are using, so the, the, the way it's going longer because we are using uh, a different variety of binder who actually it's grow in winter season by Omar Ortiz, my brother, and that binder, it's not adding enough strength. It's just adding flavors. So the problem with the original Peruvian blend, it was that it's always giving, given to me like a heat, but not in a good way. Just like a heat of strength, but just putting out the acidic from the Peruvian. But having this different binder, I completely found that give to us the opportunity to have that acidic but not interpreted like a solid acidic. It's just more a mix of sweet, creaminess, and acidic. Sweet, creaminess, and acidic. That sounds like something we want to get into. So I'm going to take the first few puffs. Can you walk me through um, some of the more maybe dominant and or softer notes here? 
Well, in the first slide. Oh, wait, wait, did you just retro hell in the first? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> How do you do? Okay, time out. You want to, let's retro hell first. Let me, let me try what you just did. Let me see. Okay. Did I do it? I can't tell. <laughs> Actually, that's really nice. It's very soft on the retro hell. Yeah. And I am absolutely getting the cream and I can, I feel the acidic of it. That's, that's actually really smooth. Yeah, and a hint of pepper, yeah. actually. But the, the pepper, I can taste the pepper on my tongue, not on my retrohaline process. You're right. It's dancing. Mm -hmm. and then, yes, okay. So what are yeah. your thoughts well, as, on the retrohaling while tasting a cigar? Because I know some people can't do it. I'm still learning. And then some people are scared to do it. Also me, right? Because I was like, oh my God, if it has pepper, I'm going to blow my nose off. And then, you know, how do you think that retrohaling the 1675 will help the tasting experience here? Well, you know, uh, one of the oh, one of the samples that I always speak about it, about why um, retrohaling every cough that I did to my cigar, it is because when you are getting a call or when you're feeling sick because of a flu, you, if you have this a problem with your nose, you cannot, you your sensitive uh, bugs, it's to start not tasting the, the the real flavor of your food. For example, you can pick pick up your favorite food, and that food it's gonna taste completely different if you have a cold, right? So it's same with tobacco. You can have a very good, interesting cigars on your palate, but if you are not retrohaling, you probably are missing the full intense or the full flavor that that cigar has to offer. It's something challenging at the beginning to try to make the retrohale because, because you have to dosify how many uh, smoke are you going to send to the top of your of your nose and how many or how many smoke are you going to blow out by your mouth through your mouth and I start slowly right now I can make like the full retrohaling or just uh, by by doses but in that in that in that case I always believe that you we have to retrohale if we are in the blending from the blending area or the tasting area, we have to retrohaling to really understand, to really interpret and comprehend what the tobacco are trying to remind us. I, I really believe that it's not that the cigar tastes like this, it's just like the cigars remind me to mm -hmm. that experience, remind me to that memory that I used to have. And we have like a more than 15, termination on on through the retro hill that that make us to remember and have a better memory from that cigar and from the from the factory side or from the blending side we have to smoke by we have to retro hailing and smoke by grado puros just to trying to determine the 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 profile that each tobacco has offer in this case lamper was designed by the specific peruvian leaves we want to enhance the fillers not the not the binder not the wrapper but in the process of developing the cigar we really know that we have to found so the cigar pushed to us to found that binder who don't have strength but actually has flavors nice and and i know that it's been said that most of the flavor of a cigar comes from the wrapper. So I find it really interesting that you speak on trying to enhance the fillers over the wrapper. How do you ensure that that is the case? How do you showcase the fillers? Well, when, when we are blending, we have two different types of working on that blend, start developing that blend. 
if you have, for example, in the case of Psycho 7 Nicaragua, that was a plan designed by enhanced experience of the grabber, not the feelers. So we, we got the profile from the grabber and we're trying to enhance that flavors. So the feelers came to help to get more present from that grabber. But in this case, we already take a decision that the important or the most present flavor has to be the Peruvian tobacco. So it could be that I can change the grabber of Lambert for a Maduro grabber and still present that acidic flavor from the producer because of the blend. The blend was created in terms of fillers, nor not in terms of grabbers. I cannot I cannot say that uh, from in, in this regard the presence of the grabber could be the 20% of the flavor. But in Psycho 7 Nicaragua could be the opposite. It could be the this the 50% it's the pen of the grabber and the rest came from the feelers. But it's just like in the way that the blender, the blender or the factory decided to give the profile to that cigar. But the Lampert, we we feel really proud about the feeler that we are using. And we really discovered that Lampert it's not the Peruvian tobacco, it's not matching again with Condega's tobacco. Mm -hmm. I, I used to mention that my favorite tobacco from Nicaragua came from Condega, but I never did before a blend with Condega tobacco because it's really hard to match with the rest of the tobaccos, specific with Jalapa. Jalapa is the, like the sweet girl who match with, with, with all of the tobaccos. You only have to take care of the proportion that you are going to use from the Esteli, for example. But talking about Jalapa, Jalapa is the cleanest. It's the cleanest and the balance from, from the Nicaraguan tobacco. But then you have Contega, who actually has the strength and who actually has that richness, flavors, and aromas. But Contega used to play by its, himself. But if you are trying to make, in my case, if I, I have been trying to make 100% puro from Contega and it's not working. I'm trying to add Contega to the Peruvian and it's not working. So that's mm -hmm. one of that's still one of my challenge, trying to find the best expression of, of Condega. Very sweet. So the more people become familiar with not just Nicaraguan tobacco, but your blending style, would you say that there is a tasting theme uh, to all the cigars that you blend? Like, is there something special that you do or at least you always want to blend with or tasting note that you aim for you know some people smoke the same thing all the time and they can smoke it blindly and say oh i know this is from jose blanco or oh my god i know this is from avo you know i have those friends who are really particular do you have something special that you would like to leave i mean in in people's smoking journey well uh when i'm blending i'm always thinking in the process of, of retrohaling, that's why my blends and, and the cigars that I used to work, it just, it's it's going to have uh, like a full strength. I'm just playing in the medium strength. Sometimes it's going lower and sometimes it's going down just because of the interpretation that you have on your palate. But my blends are always designed on medium, medium strength but full in flavors. And my flavors are used to tend in the sweet version. But I combat that sweet version right now with the city and, and, the, and the creaminess. The, the tobacco that I always have been using with all my blends is the Viso Jalapa. But that Viso Jalapa that we are using, it's growing, fermenting, from ferment, and aging by my family. So that tobacco has a, has beautiful has a beautiful flavors that you can track that that specific flavor. It's just like a, a chocolate but dry notes. I, I don't want to get in a deep of that, but it's just like a, a simple chocolate, like a like an inch of chocolate that you can taste in in the last in the last. Uh, creation and I got that from so my the cigar that I'm start smoking when I like five or six years ago was Umaro Tes Originals 
and that cigar, just because that is specific Jalapa, mm -hmm. tastes tastes different. It's just like I can get it, and I make this taste. I can get different Jalapa, and that different fermentation or extra fermentation or well not fermentate for me. It's completely changed that part. So I. I really believe that when you are lighting up uh, a cigar from Agro Tobaccos, you always expect a well-fermented tobacco. Very sweet. And, and, and a decent construction. Perfect construction so far. Yeah. <laughs> so from start to finish, how long does it take to blend the 1675? That that took us more than more than a year, but a year. when we when we really uh, defined and found the uh, which are going to be the blend, it just took us uh, three extra months to trying to define because after we got the blend that that we think this is the blend and we don't have to fix nothing, then we enter to the proportion area. It's just like, okay, we create the blend in a 5 by 50, for example, or in a Corona Larga. But now we have to move all that flavors to a bigger ring gauge. And that's going to be the interesting game. Because on the, in the, in the, on the Peruvian blend on Lamper Cigars, we got, uh, okay, I got this flavor. I remind this flavor. But when I transfer to a 6 by 52, or six by fifty-four, or a shorter cigar. It just, I just trying to hit same profile. But I have to be clear that the robusto toro and short robusto don't taste equal. Mm -hmm. They taste similar, but you have different expression on each one. So we are trying to get as closer as the original blend. But that's why it took us three months to find the best expression on the Toro, the best expression on the Short Robusto and the Robusto. Got you. You said we. How many people weigh in on, on the blending process? Well, on the blending, if, if, I, if I be clear, so in the blending process are a lot of people involved from the people who, this, who knows which seed uh those tobacco was grow and which type of fermentation and then we have our team actually the blending team are four people with my dad in agro tobacco so i sit down i sort in the cigars by by texture and colors and when i sort that bales i separate that bales and that and then i'm start smoking grado puros and when i have an idea what i would like Mm -hmm. I share my first samples with my team. It's Freddy and Leonidas. So they start giving giving to me their feedback. But at that moment, it's all bland. Because, okay. for example, I'm not... So when I'm smoking, I always put in attention to the retrohale, but not concentrating in the aroma side. And Leonidas, from the, it's the packaging manager, Leonidas, it's really it's really focused on the aromas. And okay. Freddy, who is the production manager, Freddy used to like the strength. So, and I'm in the, I'm in the, in the palette. So in that, in that way, we work together. And Freddy used to in charge of creating uh, the samples, the first samples. I have to make me sure that this, the tobacco that Freddy are going to put inside, it's the tobaccos that I've already sourced, and in that moment came uh, came the other guy from the from the factory who is in charge, Edwin, who is in charge of the materials. So I had to explain Edwin, who actually not smoke cigars. I had to explain, hey, Edwin, we have to pick up this exactly color of leaves and this texture because if you are changing for this, we are going to have a problem. And well. At that moment, we have like six, seven different people working on that. But when we define that blend, we, we send samples to that, that approve that. 
But after that, it's the big game of the factory. Because if the bochero decide to add an extra leaf or an extra piece of leaves, that cigar can change completely. Just a, a small piece of leaves. Because you have the blend, it's not designed on that extra leaf. So that's the most important part of a blending cigar. It's not like, okay, I can create that blend. I can mm -hmm. know which mm -hmm. tobaccos I would like to have or which tobaccos I use. But if I don't transfer my knowledge or my thoughts to the rest of my people, they cannot make that job. And so the full factory, the, full, the whole factory is involved in the blending. It's involved in creating a cigar. And that's why I, I think I was thinking that we have been making mistakes, like thinking that the blends came from just one people and I'm the blender and I'm feel proud because I'm the owner of this blend. But yeah. at that moment, it's just like, you're my job of sitting there to smoke just Grado Puros and trying to find the best expression. It's mm -hmm. the less important from the full cadena of the making a cigar. Because the final decision, it's went to the bonchero decide which tobaccos and decide to respect the instruction that the old all, all the manager are trying to share with them. And we are completely forget about the grabber. If I add to Lambert, I, I mentioned that the grabber is not too present on Lambert, but if I add a really lighter grabber to the cigar, it's going to change the profile. Sure. And Absolutely. so that's the time where the sorting girls came to play because they have to be clear which is the range of colors that we are going to use on Lambert. So, well, the blending, the, the blending team is, uh, I, I believe that it, it's every people who decided to join us on and, and to work with us in Agro Tabacos. And, and that became from, from the seeds that Omar Orlando, my brother, decided to grow that year and and we really in, in agro we really respect about this is your area you can share with me your thought but you will be the, the in charge of this so uh basically that's that's the blending I, I swear i feel like i just got a tobacco tour of like your entire factory i feel like i feel like you just painted the most perfect picture of what being in this business really looks like um, sidebar, I just want to say hello to all the Sisters of the Leaf in the comments. I see you. Thank you. Um, also, too, Q-Tip wants to know, how many cigars do you smoke daily? It's the fun of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is my first cigar of the day today, and probably I'm going to smoke an extra cigar, but, um, Right now, being the, the general manager of, of Mombacho, I just smoke two cigars per day. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, or when we have tasting, because we already started the tasting, uh, <laughs> when we have the tasting and analyzing the tobacco, I can smoke like five, six. But in agro, when for developing this blend, wow, that took us, if, if we found that we are missing something, we can smoke like 12 cigars per day or more than cigars. But I have to, I, I need to be clear with not smoke the full cigar, just having the first or second inch and we know uh, uh, as soon as possible what if the cigar are gonna evolve or it's not gonna give us what we are looking and we move to the, to the next one. Oh, that's important to know. Sounds mm -hmm. like it sounds like when we're at a trade show, probably the most cigars I've ever smoked is, has been mm -hmm. at PCA, and that's probably been about seven, which really which really means eight, but it's probably like seven. But you're right, you smoke just the first, maybe the tip of the second, third, and and then you literally move on to the next one. So let me ask you a personal question: When you prep to smoke a cigar, whether professionally or personally new blend or something you like to smoke, what do you do to get ready for that smoke experience? Do you have a ritual? Like, do you have a bag of goodies and a flask or do you need coffee? Do you have a juice? Any of those cute little things? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm a simple person mm -hmm. and I would like to stay in my, 
when I'm when I'm tasting, I would like to always have a cup of coffee, black coffee with no sugar, and and that I always make a, I always toast the the cigar. I never light up in direct to my mouth because I want to meet the full expression of that tobacco from the beginning, and that's it. That's it. I I just having to to make me sure if I'm in a good in a good in a good conditions mm -hmm. because uh, here in Granada I, I I have I have been I have some struggles because of the humidity here because we have a, a an island near to us and and it's really hot and humid. So mm. my cigars and, and my blend from Agro taste completely different, completely, ah. completely different. And I just, I just trying to, to prepare my cigars, make me sure of the humidity it's correct. And if the environment is really, it's, it's not getting enough humidity. And that's, that's basically that I'm deep, but it's res recently because in Agro Tabacos, I let my cigars in my desk and I can grab that cigars a week after and that cigar is gonna be great if it is gonna have any issues with the with the bonchetos. Yeah. So you mentioned roasting your tobacco. So I wanna ask you a question about um, do you use do you prefer torches or soft flames? And how and and this is my thing. This is a personal thing. I have a I'm not a torch girl. I'd rather take my time and just you know, sit here and just let you <laughs> and heat it up, right? Some people are a little bit more heavy on the torch, heavy on the butane. Can you tell me or share with us how you light your cigars? You mentioned just kind of heating it up. So do you use a soft flame and do you take your time or do you prefer using a torch? Well, if, if, I, if I pick up one, I will always use match. It's okay. really hard there, but um, I'm getting professional on that, lighting up with match. Okay. But uh, every day in the factory, because of the butane, it's really expensive in Nicaragua. I use a beak. And, but the secret with the beak, it's just don't, don't put the flame direct to your cigar. Just toss your cigars and, and you have to invest more time. But if you, if you really press the cigar and really push that flame direct to your cigar, you are going to get bad flavors. And we are on tasting uh, area and developing blends. So we know that we don't have to light up direct to the cigar. And well, I, I used to like torch because with the wind, with the wind it's it's easy. Soft flame, well, I think that, uh, that, that I got soft flame with a beak. <laughs> Let's see. There's nothing wrong with the big lighter. <laughs> it, serves, it serves its purpose. But one day I will have that sophisticated and really shiny and, and beautiful soft lane, okay? <laughs> one day. We're going to get I'm, you I'm work. with my beak. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple more questions. Did you, I know you've been in tobacco literally your entire life. Did you ever dream of becoming anything else professionally? Was there anything else that you wanted to do? Well, I love plants. So mm -hmm. when I finish my my university, I'm planning to have like a big greenhouse and selling plants, but in a bucket, in a very, very amazing bucket. But <laughs> I quit from, from that dream just to follow the, the cigar industry. And I used to like the photography, but I really know that demands a lot of time. And I, and I, well, I, I don't, I didn't dedicate enough time, but I don't have, right now, I don't have, uh, if I don't be in the cigar industry, probably I will dedicate my life to make uh, social works mm -hmm. and trying to, to share more with, uh, with the Nicaraguan people. Mm -hmm. That could be, and actually, that that's going to be an option. I think that the cigar industry, day by day, it's open to me that opportunity to work with the people, to understand the people. So right now, I'm just starting with understanding the philosophy and the way that my family, my new Bombacho family, are thinking, 
and how we can get uh, all of together a better, a better uh, up here in a better uh, show. Yeah, absolutely. Will we be seeing you this year at either TPE or PCA? Maybe. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> yeah, it's baby. Oh, I'm pretty sure we everyone would love to get a piece of Indiana Ortiz uh, this year. We, I want to be able to uh, circle back around to the 1675. So, the new American release comes out next week, I believe. You are showcasing. The Lamper 1675 at TPE next week. Also, too, if you want to pre order the Lamper 1675, you can pre order it from Small Batch Cigars, or you can also order it from Luxury Cigars. But if you do it at Small Batch and use Sisters and Smoke as a promo code, we'll give you 10% off. So get on that. So we can all indulge in Indiana's very good blend. All right. And Indiana, listen, let us know when you're ready to come out and play. I'm pretty sure all the Sisters of the Leaf on here will love to have you. We will welcome you. And, uh, and congratulations again on all the things that you're doing in the industry. And I, everybody knows I'm a fan. I love your photos. I love your work and your smile. And so congratulations. Thank you, Ben. So I think that we have a, a big news with, with the guys from a small batch. That, that was my blend that I uh, that, that we create during quarantine. So it is a very, very, very special blend. It is a beautiful size, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not too familiar with that size, but I start loving that size, working on that on that project uh, with small batch. Mm -hmm. So could be could be a, a visit to us very very soon in in the next six months and we can have fun all together can't wait can't wait to visit all of you guys can't wait to get in on road again and and having fun because I, I i feel that i need that i feel that i need that energy because it's completely different energy but in my in my in my near future, I'm um, dedicated my, my full time to Mombacho. Mm -hmm. And when we are ready, we are going to let all of you know. Oh, yes. You know, I'm excited because I'm in LA. I'm about 40 minute drive from Maximar. So I will bring all of my friends <laughs> to come see you. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Well, that's the end of our show for Unbox Live. Again, I'm Sisters in Smoke. This is Indiana Ortez from Mombacho. And we'll see you again next month. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.